Hello everybody and welcome to How to Make Your Wife Happy and Healthy. Today we're going to tackle on a dish that my daughter has been requesting to have every week because she loves it so much. It's an American classic but it takes quite a while to cook. Whether or not you use a crock pot or a regular pot. What dish is it you wonder? Well come on, let's get cooking. I'm back after a short little vacay to a country who I will not name in English so that you might guess as to see where it might be according to the clues I'm about to give you. Well, actually, two countries because we visited a wonderful waterfall that shares a border with these two countries. And one thing I noticed in this country is that every place you went to with the hotels, their free breakfast were always pretty much exactly the same scrambled eggs, sausage. Uh, sandwiches, ham, cheese, uh, fruit, which would be usually honey guava, watermelon, and pineapple, along with just some kind of water if you wanted to drink, and maybe some tea if you were adventurous for that. Anyway, every single place we went to, pretty much exact same breakfast. Oh, and pastries. Lots of pastries for breakfast. Very interesting country. So if you want to figure it out where it might be, you can leave me some comments below, see if you know, or ask me questions about other cuisines we tried there, and I'll let you know what happened. Today's shout out goes to... Adventures, Adventures in Food, in food, food with, with Howard. 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 He has a wonderful video on how to make mayonnaise, which I'm sure my daughter will want me to try because she just loves mayonnaise as well as a wonderful simple spaghetti recipe that includes some of the best fresh ingredients, tomatoes, basil, and garlic. Uh, some of my three favorite things to put on spaghetti. So go ahead and check out his channel. Links are down below. If you want to shout out in my next video, then go ahead and wait till the end of the video, watch to the end, or skip ahead and find out how I will give you a shout out for my next video. Today is going to be my take on an American classic, Beef Stew. I can use a crock pot in my version because, you know, I get busy in the afternoon, don't have time to cook, and it takes three hours of watching and working with it if you use a regular pot, or it could go a lot faster in a pressure cooker. But I'm going to use the crock pot because I can set it in the morning and let it go, and then we're good until dinner time. Here are the ingredients. Two pounds of chopped beef chuck, or you can just buy beef for stew from the grocery store. Two teaspoons of salt. We're going to use one teaspoon each time. One teaspoon of black pepper, or two tastes. Two tablespoons of oil for frying. We're using the high heat frying. I don't like to use olive oil. I like to use any good old vegetable kind of oil. Two cloves of garlic, or in this case, three, or as many as you like. We like garlic, so I increase garlic from usual recipe dishes. One cup of your finest red wine. No, don't waste good wine on this dish. Cheapest stuff is best. Four cups of beef broth. Wait for my epic food hack for this one coming up. One tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Two bay leaves. Adds a lot of flavor. Two carrots. If you like more, you can use more. We like potatoes, so we're only going with two carrots. Three medium-sized potatoes. My daughter loves potatoes, so I add an extra one. Three stalks of celery. Let me show you how to prepare it later. 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes. Okay, first things first, we're going to heat up our oil for the beef fryer. Three tablespoons of oil right in the pot. After we have fried the oil, we're tossing the crock pot. Now honestly, you do not have to put all the ingredients into the fryer first like I'm going to do. And then put in the crock pot. You just toss everything in the crock pot in the morning, turn it on to low, and let it go. But 
you might find the meat tastes better if it's fried first. So we'll let that oil heat up. While we're heating up the oil, we're gonna season our beef with salt and pepper. As your pan's heating up, we're going to add the salt and pepper to the beef. Now, you don't have to use your hands like I'm going to do, but I like to wash less dishes, so I'm adding one tablespoon, table. So I'm adding one teaspoon of black pepper, and another teaspoon of salt. Come on, there you go. Straight onto the beef. Then I'm going to mix it by hand. I'd rather get my hands dirty than a plate dirty. To mix it all in, to all the cubes. I'm being careful to keep it in the black tray itself. Okay, that's good mix now. The fryer. All right, look, check the oil, see if it's good and hot. Wow, it flows freely. That is really hot oil. All right, we're gonna really fry the beef up really quickly in nice browning technique. How do I know if oil's hot? I tilt the pan back and forth. Wow, that is free flowing oil, really fast flowing. That means it's really hot. Good time to put in the beef. I make sure the beef is nice and brown on all sides. Now that all the beef parts are nice and brown, time to put it in the crock pot so that it will get nice and tender with the long cooking. You can see I've got my crock pot ready. I'm gonna turn it on to low for the long cooking. And put Put the beef only in the crock pot. And come back to this dish. It's a little too much oil for my likings. I'm gonna get rid of some of that oil. And I'll come back and cook the garlic. If you look at the pan, you see a nice little ring of brown bits. That's wonderful stuff. We're gonna take the wine to take it off. But first, in the oil, we want to cook our garlic. So the oil nice hot, so we want to cook our garlic. When I get to that nice brown, as soon as it drops in, I can smell it. If you like to grate it beforehand, put it in later, that's up to you. I like to grate it right over the pot. Less dishes for cleanup. It's gotta be fast with it. Otherwise it all browns before you get it in. So we're gonna brown the garlic, and then put in the wine to stop the frying process. Good. The garlic's nice and brown. I can smell the garlic. Time to dump in a cup of wine. Time to dump in a cup of the cheap stuff. Okay, as that cooks, we're going to scrape the pot. And you can't see it very well. But I just... Okay, now that we put in the wine and have deglazed the pan, 
So I put it around. I see there's no more of those brown bits. Wonderful. It's all in the wine. And we've cooked the wine enough, reduced it a little bit, so the alcohol's gone. So your kids are safe to eat the dish. And do time for my epic food hack. It's time for an epic food hack with Daddy. For the beef broth, straight on four cups of water. Once it's in the pot, now I'm going to add the beef bouillon so it can dissolve inside the hot liquid. Four cups of water means four teaspoons of beef bouillon. Two, three, four. Much easier to use this method rather than to heat up some water, add some bouillon, dissolve it, and that's the bouillon straight in. And then mix it up. Once the liquid gets nice and hot, we're going to pour it all over the beef. Then we'll add the vegetables after. Now that our beef wine dog mix is nice and hot, we're going to turn off the flame and pour it all straight onto the beef that's already in the crock pot. There's your juice for the stew. This is what the beef looks like in the crock pot. At this point, and add two bay leaves. We're gonna have the vegetables on top right after. Now it's time to prepare the vegetables. First, let me show you how I prepare the celery. I'm gonna break off the ends. Get as much ribs out as I can. This will be very important in the later dish I show you. But this dish not so important because when you cook it for such a long time, it's gonna be so tender, those ribs aren't gonna bother you that I'm peeling out right now. I'm gonna peel them all out. Just gonna throw them away. They're bad ribs. They get stuck in your teeth. They're real annoying. So the more you can take out before you prepare it, the less annoyed your guests will be. Now that the celery has been ribbed and dewashed, we're gonna slice it up. You may have noticed I use a blue board for all my vegetables. That's so that the vegetables that I use are always cut on a blue board. So whatever contaminants there are in vegetables, stay as vegetables, which should be none after washing. We're not preparing meat today, but if I was cutting up some meat, it would be on a red board. If you see my previous videos, like the beef broccoli dish where I'm cutting up meat, it gets cut on top of a red board. So cut up all your celery. That's good. Some of them are a little bigger than others. If you want to chop them more, you can. I'm going to leave them just like that. Set them aside, get them ready to put into the pot. Next, we're going to prepare some carrots. First things first, got to peel them. Take a vegetable peel, and I'm going to peel right over a trash can. You're not going to get to see that, but they're going to come back nice and peeled. Now the carrots have been peeled to wash, we're going to prepare them some of the way I prepared the celery. I'm going to cut off the ends though, because I don't like the ends. We're going to slice them up. Then we're going to slice them up. Not too thin. First, going to cut it down broad way. A nice half cut. From there, somewhat bigger slices. The real big ones, I'll cut, chop off again. There we go. A nice cut down Broadway. Cut your carrot in half. 
and then chop them up. That's a good hearty size. We'll keep that. And there's our carrots. We're gonna set those aside and next I'll cut up all the potatoes. You notice I purposely have let the potatoes to last because when you cut them up, when exposed to the air, the inside part starts to brown a little bit. Not that it's gonna taste bad or make them bad. But you don't wanna have it look brown. That's just my taste. It's not gonna matter because once you put them into the crock pot, they are not going to keep that brown color. They're going to get whatever color there is after cooking. It'll be fine. So we're going to, again, peel and wash and then cut. Okay, now that we got our tubers all washed and ready to go, we're going to cut them up. Don't have to cut them too small. Going to cut them in fours first. Cut them in half so you get a nice flat area so they don't move when you cut them again. And just launch into them. There we go. That's a good size for a potato. Move that one aside and do the next one. Cut into quarters. Cut into quarters. And slice it up. We love potatoes. So potatoes are the number one vegetable, so we cut a lot of them. Now let's go put all the vegetables into the crock pot. Now that it's been cooking for about 10 or so minutes while I prepare the vegetables. Now that we've prepared all the vegetables, you just see some steam on the top. I'm going to take it off. Now I'm just going to dump in the vegetables and stir it around a bit. Celery and carrots. The potatoes. Let none of them escape. And the can of tomatoes. Juice included. Take all those ingredients, we're gonna stir it up. Probably don't really need to, we're just gonna do a little stirring to make sure it's kind of even. Now we're going to cover our crock pot, keep it on low and let it cook for six to eight hours. When it's done, it's ready to eat. Now the beef stew has been cooking for half a day or a full day. Uh, see it's bubbling up a bit. That's have some nice and tender meat inside. Tender vegetables, tender meat from that long so cooked. Meat's already just with the ladle. Oh, if you see a bay leaf or two, you can take it out. And not serve it with the dish because those you do not want to eat for flavor only. Our kids like their beef stew with a side of rice. So we're going to serve it with a side of rice. Go ahead and dig down, get that beef from the bottom. A lot of the vegetables. Pour over the rice. Why? Because they love the sauce on the rice. Beef stew with a side of rice. The tender meat flavor only has the juice that gets over the rice potatoes, not potatoes and carrots that make the vegetables taste like beef.
the race compliments the compliments the their beef nicely. <laughs> it's the best dish to have on a Monday night. Not nice. <laughs> Since you've made it this far, go ahead and hound that like button just like my daughter hounds me on a daily basis to make beef stew because she just loves it so much. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to notify of all my new videos that come out on Mondays most of the time. And just to mess with those people who don't watch the outro, be sure to slip the word cucumber somewhere in your comment below for a chance at a shout out in my next video. Thanks for watching and have a happy and healthy day.